Blessings to y'all. Um, I ended up with uh, sawdust in my eye, and it uh been painful, but it's taken care of now. But through it all, the Spirit has guided me, inspired me to share a message, uh, a, a teaching through it. Because he says we go through things um, and we can comfort others with the comfort that God has given us. And we understand, and, and I'm going to start, uh, this is a little out of the way of what I'm sharing, but we, we understand in 2 Corinthians 1, it says we speak words given to us by using the Spirit, words to explain spiritual truth. And we can end up with this envisionment in our minds so we no longer have to fret or worry about certain things, but God can actually use it so we can teach use spiritual truths to teach others through it. Uh, we, we can do this with everyday life um, if we're open to it. It's part of God changing our perspective. And um, Paul shares that in, in 2 Timothy 2, it says, I am willing to endure anything if it will bring salvation and eternal glory in Christ Jesus. And this is a beautiful heart to get into. We end up enduring things and, and turning to Christ, becoming obedient through the things we suffered like Christ did in order for the result of salvation of others. Though, Paul went through, and Jesus went through a lot worse things than what I'm going through uh, with with the eye, which which is handled now over the last couple of days. His, But still, that willingness to endure and turn to the spirit to learn and teach others through it uh, is a beautiful thing so I wanted to share I mean talking about sawdust first off how something so small something so little can affect everything your view your focus you get so distracted by it I mean, one little sawdust or uh, a wound on your arm or your phone. I mean, anything, just the smallest things can distract us. Even James 3 shares that our tongue is a tiny thing, but it can set fires, forests on fires, by the very fires of hell itself. And something so small can corrupt many things, many nations. And so we uh, and how I want to share this is that small piece of something. I mean, we could say we we could look at it. I'm looking at it with sin this time. We could say, well, that's just sin. It's it's nothing. It's it's small. It's just gossip. It's a little fit of anger or uh, uh, just a little lie. It's not a big deal. Well. I was thinking about this further when it comes to sawdust or something in your eye or anything. With the sawdust, you put water into there and if you're not proper in it, whatever you're trying to put in it to remove it, it's just going to make the problem worse. It'll moist it up and grow and grow and grow. That small sin, if you moisture it with the wrong thing, without assistance too, because we need to have be there with our brothers to help us guide us and that's the point of this message it'll just grow and grow and get worse and worse it'll take that moisture that speck and grow it into a log and that goes into the message i'm sharing first matthew 7 3 through 5 why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eyes and pay no attention to the plank in your own and so we we so often try to correct brothers and share when deep down we know we still have the root of that same old problem. Um, part of why God disciplined me for this, which which I understood, is because I was a part of others and I was 
joking around with somebody, but the Bible says to build one another up in love. You don't want to mock them or, or make fun of them, even if it's all fun. And I got disciplined by the sawdust because of it. Because I have to recognize Christ took that away from me. He he blessed me and gave me the ability of what I do. I used to be that same person. And I pray and ask God to give me the abilities to do things. When I used to be the guy who was mocked and I forgot about Christ as I was doing that and what he's done for me. And we have to remember always what Christ has done for us. He, the king who uh, lent, uh, covered the whole debt of that servant, he showed mercy to him and paid for it. And then somebody, that servant's servant, owed him money. And he refused. He didn't forgive. And he was harsher on him. And he was thrown. He threw him into prison. And that guy got punished with imprisonment himself by the king for not acting out what he was shown. And we always have to remember what we were shown by God. The grace and mercy he has given us. Otherwise, yeah, we have that log back in our eyes that... God may have removed. We could do this blindly without realizing it. Uh, and that goes into uh, 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And this is important because people will oftentimes use that. Well, you can't point the speck out of my eye when you still have a plank. So in the same area, we can assume that there is a plank in somebody's eye. When in reality, God has actually freed them in using a spiritual truth to help them grow them and bring them into further understanding. But we'll throw that scripture out there in a way to to assume they have a plank so we can refuse to listen and learn from it when we can confess our sins and be cleansed see that's also fully trusting in the gospel message knowing that god can take it all from us and we can be free and recognizing that and seeing that in others and that goes into um, Galatians 6 1. It says, If anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness, but keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. And that goes into something else. Paul says in Romans 12 3, he says, uh, if you careful of thinking you're standing so strong, at least you fall. Right? Don't think yourself better as you are. You're not that great as you think you are. Um, we can fall into this pride or this temptation ourselves. Or we could start acting like, like I was joking around with the, this kid. I was acting like those around me. I was tempted. And I wasn't keeping a watch on myself and what Christ has done in me. And I wasn't staying within that thankfulness and that grace. And yet I walked out of it to enjoy the company around me. And, and what we, we are supposed to correct and restore, the spiritualness. Like, like it says with elders, it, um, it talks about that in Timothy. It says an elder should be one who can maintain their children and and that they have overcome. They're not drunkard. They don't have fits of anger. and that they got their self together before they became an elder. And I bring that up, the importance of that, because God has is ordaining people who have overcame 
but they can admit their sins at times. Like he showed me what I did wrong and why I received this right away. And you can admit and learn it. But those who are pride and not learning from their mistakes, that, that's a problem. And we don't want those type of people leading our church. But, and this is showing that as an elder, I mean, you should be in a certain level of growth. And and we, in the same way, we can end up in that spiritual area and understand and overcame all the logs in our eyes, right? That removed those sins. We're free from them and we confessed and, and, and we rid ourselves of all unrighteousness. And then we are capable of pointing out the speck in others. Because God desires us to. It says in James 5, 19 to 20, it says, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So here, here's the thing. We need to understand that there are some brothers who general, genuinely care for others and want them to be rescued from spiritual death. They're not casting judgment on them, but they know they themselves have been restored and their plank has been removed and their desire is to bring them f from the truth they left or from what they left. And bring them back into the truth. Realizing that you're saving that person's soul. Uh, from a multitude of sins. Which on judgment day they would be cast against. That person. So it is out of love. And understanding that we've been there. We've faced that. And that's why God has put us through it. So we can reflect and help others with it. To overcome it. But if we just, in the same way, keep to ourselves with uh, what God has taught us, and we just pass by seeing a brother who, who has fallen into something, we are passing judgment because we're just like, well, I don't want to get involved, I don't care, uh, and we're actually sentencing that person to damnation because we don't want to tell them what we know. And that's putting them into judgment. And it can be assuming that they don't want to hear. And we don't want to fall into that. Um, that's... The assumptions are... Yeah. Um, so Second Timothy 4 says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove rebuke, extort with complete patience and teaching. So we need to rebuke. Relying on the Holy Spirit, what He shows us, spiritual truths, he, uh, he guides us into their soul and, and shows them what they're dealing with. Uh, we have this capability if we're truly free. He, he tells the Fer Jesus tells the Pharisees, if you judge, make sure you judge correctly. He didn't say we can't judge at all. Because in 1 Corinthians 5, it shares, well, we're not to judge the world. We'd have to leave the world, people like that. But those within the church, you have to remove the evil from within you. But if they repent, you need to invite them back in. Uh, Jesus, uh, he speaks, uh, when they're asking him about how many times I should forgive, he said, if your brother, or rebuke your brother, if he sins, but if he repents, invite him back in and forgive directly towards him. I mean, if, if he... You, you still have to have that forgiveness of what he did, but inviting him amongst you when he refuses to change, that's, that's a different story. Um, 
but with complete patience. So, so back into the Timothy verse, when you rebuke and exhort, you got to understand it might take a, a little bit before it really reaches into their depths of their soul. Uh, and that's where um, in Second Peter 3, 9, it shares that God is not slow, as some people think, but he's actually being patient, for he wants none to perish, but all to come into repentance. So we have to understand, God's heart is for us to wait on those. We share the truth, but sometimes it takes a little bit for it to grow. It's God's timing to, to nourish it and help it grow. And we got to be patient with that. It took us a while to open our eyes, and we have to remember that for others. And instead of getting discouraged and and losing confidence, which I've done myself. I've lost confidence. Um, seeing people that I've took under, relying on the Spirit to teach, and they wandered away, and they didn't want to listen anymore. Uh, that doesn't mean God's not going to bring them back and open that seat up to grow it we have to learn patience and that's the very way to do it is to fall into area of it uh, fruit takes exercise it takes nourishment to grow so we need to examine ourselves first Get deep in prayer and in the Word. Make sure that we are in Christ. Connected to the vine. That we are relying on the Holy Spirit to correct others. And share with others. Otherwise we will fall into that temptation ourselves. We'll fall into pride. We can't rely on ourselves, we need to rely on the Holy Spirit. But we also need to recognize that it is our job to extort. Relying on the Holy Spirit. That's it. Um, but we always need to make sure that we're not at treating others in the same way that God rescued us from. How, uh, like me, that that was me that I was picking on. And that's not right. I put the log back in my eye. Well, I got put in the eye of people I used to judge. And you gotta be careful. We can always fall. But the other thing I was going to share about this is about the spec is we can go to others like I had to do someone who was experienced to help take it out he knew what he was doing that spec and to go to those who are spiritual he could help me remove it the Bible says confess one another your sins um, it shares uh and Timothy says, if someone is sick, go to the elders and they'll lay hands on you. That physical sickness, that is very true. But it's also spiritual sick. It's facing sort of sins and other things that, that we can help restore others. And, uh, and be able to not be too proud to share what you're going through. Uh, and not thinking that someone else doesn't want to listen because some might but we might miss the opportunity because we're still having that log saying nobody really cares when who are we to make that judgment we can just speak and see what what God has done is going to do because he can we got to understand the body the body of Christ, 
he's going to use other people that's gone through things to help us overcome things and to remove things um, that goes through experience and he'll use those people but We have to have that willingness to understand. Um, we need to have eyes and ears to hear. Uh, Jesus says that they don't have eyes or ears, they're not using them. But if they do use them, then they will be healed. They can turn to me and be healed. And that's another thing. I mean, that's our, with our culture. Are we going to open our eyes and be accountable for our actions. To recognize when we ain't acting right, when we need God and we've kicked him out and we listen to things that aren't of him. And that goes into another verse that Jesus says connected with this. He says that uh, your eye is the lamp to the soul. If you put darkness into it, oh, how dark it is. And what, what are we putting into our eyes that is corrupting our whole bodies? What? Then we don't realize it. I mean, I, when, when people came around when I got this spec, I didn't think it was that, I, they, to me it seemed like they were making like it was really bad and I didn't think it was because I've had other things get into my eye and I've never really realized how bad it could be until now but that's how it is with our sin or anything else uh, it can look so mild so innocent but if it doesn't glorify God it can corrupt our whole bodies and it can keep us in darkness and this whole world with Satan as the ruler I mean he will promote everything against God and we find it so normalized and we don't recognize it and we let it all into our eyes and ears and it hurts us we're not careful at first and then we end up with a lot of pain in the end and we wonder why instead of learning from from our mistakes and what we did and that's why it's also good to surround yourself with people who have overcame and understand a new life a new way of living that came from broken ashes to a beautiful flower by the work of God those people can help you and guide you in life and it's good to surround yourself with it because there's always going to be wolves trying to surround you and teach you different and to keep you stuck into your actions and your sin um, when God wants us to be free it says that we can in Romans 6 that we can choose to be a slave to sin or choose to be a slave to righteousness and God and pretty much that's our choice. Uh, in John 3, it shares that people love the darkness more than the light. And that's what his judgment is based on. I mean, we can go to church once a week and do whatever else and still try to flush out anything that convicts us because we want to keep that darkness but we also want to feel good like we're going to go to heaven anyway and we all need freedom from that it is it's possible and we are called to have a clear conscience and to be ready and prepared for Jesus' return and Paul shares about how Ananias and or sorry Alexander and Hemophis, they lost track of their faith, or their faith was shipwrecked because they didn't, and that, that can happen to us too. 
if we're not careful, if we're not careful of what we're letting our, surround us and, and ha living by faith and not by sight, because human eyes, they're never satisfied. They always want more. And yet, desiring that more can destroy us. We need to learn to be content with what God gave us. And most of all, um, understand that God's grace is sufficient, which Paul also was told by God when he tried to have the thorn in his flesh, he cried out three times for it to be removed. God said, my grace is sufficient. Don't worry about what you don't have or what you're suffering. Learn to live out through His grace. Learn to learn through what you're going through to, to help others. Because, I mean, He had the throne of His rest to keep Him from pride. Uh, duh. That's, that's what this sawdust in my eye was to keep me from pride. Although He removed it once I understood you know, understood and and connected all the pieces I needed to to also share this message. Um, I was also thinking about how Ananias came in Acts to lay hands on Paul, and it said that the, his eyes peeled like scales falling off, but God blinded him. Because he was stuck in pride and following this version of God that he created. And uh, she stopped him for a moment and blinded him to, to see how blinded he was. And he sent someone with the Holy Spirit, which also took forgiveness on Ananias' part. And... The scales were moved and he had new eyes to see. He didn't see things the way he did. Used to. Um, that's another reason why God, or another way God sends someone else to, to give us new eyes to see when we're blinded. I mean, the Pharisees asked the blind man that was healed, he said, all I know is I was blind, but now I can see. You know, uh, and, and that's true for all of us. We are blind at a time. Uh, and God may send somebody to remove the, the scales from our eyes that are keeping us blind. So we can be set free from our bondage and learn to love others the way Christ has loved us and learn to treat others the way Christ treated us but we always have to remember what he's done for us Paul did consistently he he shared how he was the worst of the sinners Pharisee of Pharisees um, the least of the apostles he, he shared those things so people recognize, I mean, the great patient God, patience God has for us um, and for him. He took, he, as he claimed, I didn't deserve it, but he uh, shows his great patience for all people through what he did to Paul. Uh, and he does that very thing to us he, he can use us and our faults to uh, show others what he can do and how he can reach into anybody but we have to make sure that plank is removed and stays that way so we can properly do that If we don't, uh, we're corrupting many like Paul did, or like uh, Peter did. In Galatians 2, it shares how, I mean, before, 
before that, he got sent to Cornelius, right? And God said, uh, you know, what I have, wh whatever's blessed by me is okay. Uh, and he came to the Gentiles and shared Cornelius and the Gentiles about the Holy Spirit. And there was the outpouring in that. But then, and, and he's been a witness to that. But then, in Galatians, he was eating with the Gentiles, and then his friends came around, and then he walked away from them. And what happened next was that other people followed that action. See, our, if we don't be careful and watch ourselves, we are deceiving many that are following us and watching us and thinking that's a, a no right way to live and then they're going to be judged on that and that's why it says in James not many of us should be teachers because we are doubly accountable so yeah we're leading a flock and we may corrupt them or we may if we teach them in season and out of season whether time is favorable or not to live right and to seek that. In Colossians 3 it says, Clothe yourselves. Uh, and it also says in 3.17 it shares, uh, Whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. So so that's the what I'm going to close with. Is, is, is everything you're doing, can you firmly say, Jesus wants me to do this? I mean, he lives inside of us. And this is why we should pray before we make any action or act a certain way. we got to make sure we're filled with the Holy Spirit, guided by the Holy Spirit. That He's taking over us each day. We die to ourselves so He can live through us. And that's the very means of why Christ sent the Advocate to, to help us from sin and to help others through us. But, yeah, so make sure you're staying in the Spirit at all times. Make sure you're wearing that armor. Because anything can creep in. The world can creep in. James shares that true religion is this. Take care of orphans and widows and refusing to let the world corrupt you. And Romans 12.1 says the true way to wash, to, um, to give your body as a living sacrifice, this is the true way to worship, right? So, if we are not giving ourselves fully to God, and we're trying to jump off the altar and do things our own way, we're going to deceive many people it is him through us where we truly live and reach others we have to be slow to speak quick to listen and slow to get angry when things don't go our way through it um, and that goes right back into being patient as it shared in uh, and being gentle as it said in Galatians 6, you restore them with gentleness and patience, lest we be tempted. Because they might disagree with us and we can fall into anger. And if we fall into that area, we are no longer useful. So we need to make sure we're remaining in Christ at all moments. Otherwise, we're going to fall into ourselves, we're going to rely on our spirit. Our, our flesh, in which Galatians 5 says that the flesh and the spirit are a constant hostility with one another. So if we do that, we lean on the wrong side, it's going to overpower the other. And there goes deceiving others. But praise God that He brings conviction and will teach us and He disciplines those who He calls His child. Um, but again, we have to be open to it. 
and learn from it. And then we can help others to keep them from falling into the same trap by Satan. That's all I have for today. Uh, now I'm pray, Father God, we just uh, thank you for another glorious day, another day of breath. Uh, we just uh, ask that we humble ourselves so you don't have to humble us, and that we learn from our mistakes and we grow into a new lens, we relying on your perspective and how you view and see things so we don't corrupt ourselves which will corrupt others oh uh, we just uh ask that there if there's any logs in our eyes that you would remove them so we can properly help others remove their speck and we just uh we ask that we grow deeper in spiritual wisdom and understanding, uh, relying fully on your spirit. And if I have shared anything that's not of you, that you would forgive me, and that people who hear have ears to hear. And at the basis, even though, as you know, uh, I'm not used to doing videos, but that they would still see you in it. And, and that's all that matters. And that you would be glorified and it would reach into their soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.